Now I'm gonna uh, go through the data that exists on those techniques and the evidence for comparing uh, dusting versus basketing. Well, the Urological Disease uh, uh, diseases in America project has shown that kidney stone prevalence is increasing, so this is something we should care about, both in men and women. And additionally, when we look at the surgical procedures that are being done, this is in a Medicare population, the number of shockwave treatments is pretty much steady um, and even maybe flattening some where the number of ureteroscopic procedures that we're doing is increasing. So I think it's important that we um, are doing the best job we can for patients. What are the things that we care about in successful stone surgery? We want maximum efficiency. We don't want to be there any longer than we need to be. We want patients stone free. We want it to be safe and we want it to be at the lowest cost. Well, what's the risk of residual fragments after any type of stone procedure? As I mentioned in my other talk, I'm part of the EDGE Consortium. And this was a study that we did uh, over six centers, it's retrospective, over 200 patients looking at the fate of residual fragments. Um, and in these patients that had residual fragments, there was a 44% stone event rate with 29% requiring re-intervention. And when we looked at the size uh, criteria, if you had a residual fragment greater than four millimeters, that predicted intervention. This has also been shown after PCNL, um, but with even a smaller uh, residual fragment size of two millimeters, Jay Raman's group showed this um, back in 2009. So we need to care about residual fragments. I showed you in my prior talk, we can fragment and basket extract, or we can dust to a degree that the patient can spontaneously pass the fragments. We use different settings. So again, just in review, for fragmentation and basket extraction, you want high frequency, I'm sorry, high energy, low frequency, and you want short pulse width. For dusting, we want low energy, high frequency, uh, and long pulse width. So let's keep, take each one of those categories and look at the evidence. So how about efficiency? Well, this is what I feel like most days in the operating room. This is Sisyphus. He was a, a, a Greek king who um, was very cruel, and he made the gods very angry, was tricking them all the time, and he managed to escape death. And so he was punished uh, for eternity and had to carry this rock all the way up a steep hill. But just when he was about to hit the top, the stone would roll back down and he would have to carry it back up again. And there are many days in the operating room that's exactly how I feel. And in fact, when I've looked at this in a scientific way, my patients with ureteroscopy is directly related to how caffeinated I am. Um, and Dr. Andriel, if you're here, I put this p-value in just for you. <laughs> I think we have all been in the operating room with fragmentation. If you have a 10 millimeter stone, it's not like you're breaking it into 10 one millimeter pieces and being able to take it out. The fragmentation is exponential. So you might start with one stone, now you have 50 fragments, and that can be extremely frustrating uh, and tedious. So how about the data that exists? So again, our EDGE group really has one of the few studies in literature looking at dusting versus basketing. This was multi-center and prospective, but it was not randomized. So if you were someone that was deemed a basketer and fragmenter, you, that's what your center did. And if you were a duster, that's what your center did. And you can say that might be a study limitation. Um, but I think you could flip it the other and say, you know, this is what you do best. And so it really t does, um, you know, compare um, the, you know, the, really this, the gold standard for both. These were larger stones, five to 20 millimeters, and we powered it to see a 20% uh, difference in stone-free rate. We used renal ultrasound and KUBs, the Im imaging modality. It's not as good as CT, but it's contemporary. I mean, this is what most people are using still uh, in the United States, at least. We had 82 in the basketing group, 68 in the dusting group, and essentially the take-home point was that operative time favored the dusting group. Well, this was a retrospective study um, looking again at dusting versus basketing, um, 107 patients, about 50 in each group, and they found similar results. Operative time favors dusting. Well, what about stone free rates? So back to our EDGE trial, we're able to show, at least on univariate analysis, that the dusting group had a lower overall stone free rate, 58% versus almost 75% in the basketing group. But then on multivariate analysis was not uh, significant. And when you look across the literature, there is a lot of uh, 
overlap in stone free rates. And I think the reason is because in stone disease, we do not have um, a, in every study a defined measure for stone free. Is it four millimeters, two millimeters, completely no stones? And the imaging modality used has been different. So again, I think the take home point here is stone free rate favors basketing, but it depends on the imaging modality and your definition. Uh, again, that's the study um, that I, that retrospective study I was discussing, they found very similar results to their EDGE study. 58% uh, um, were stone free in dusting and 78% in the basketing group. So I um, feel like that's, uh, um, there's congruence with those two studies. What about safety? I know Dr. Rossweiler is waiting for me to show this, this, this uh, image. So in our EDGE trial, when we compared the two groups, um, the reintervention was higher in the dusting group, but it wasn't significant. Um, and there was really no difference in uh, the other retrospective study I showed you, although the secondary procedure rate was higher in the dusting group. When we basket extract, we are more likely to put in an access sheath. And I think there's a lot of fear around access sheaths. Um, I have seen this picture by Dr. Traxair at every talk that's ever been given about ureteral access sheaths uh, since the 2013 when it was published. And it's scary to look at those. That's when you take the ureteral access sheath out, what potentially the ureter could look like. But you know, they did a follow-up study looking at the higher injuries, the two and three injuries in the Traxair scale, and did not show an increased rate of ureteral stricture, 1.8%, which is very similar to the non-access sheath group. Well, when we do a lot of basketing, we're probably more likely, and we put an access sheath, probably more likely to put a stent in. Well, this is what people on the, inter in the internet say about stents. Agony from day one, blood with every pee, Screaming the place down, form of torture. And my favorite, bedridden in agony, just hope I have a penis left when they're done. So people don't like stents, I think we all know that. Um, but there are unfortunate cases of dusting as well. This was a patient of mine. I thought this is a perfect, this is a perfect stone to dust. Renal pelvis, we've got the Moses, we're gonna tee it up. And literally, as soon as this patient took the stent out, we, she was back in the op, uh, in the ER with residual fragments, not only in the ureter, but also in the kidney. Um, so I mean, I think that it, it certainly happens. Obviously, we didn't do a good enough job in our dusting, but we managed that conservatively. Well, what about cost? You'd say, hey, if you have to open a basket, a stent, an access sheath, that's going to be much more expensive than if you didn't. Um, and actually, we, in, in an, uh, another EDGE study that we did, we, we estimated the savings could be over $1,300 if you used a dusting technique. But I would also say, if you go online and you go to eSutures.com, you can buy a 1315 access sheath for $35. You can buy a night and all basket for $145. And if you make the patient stone free, it's a priceless operation. And in fact, it's not like you don't use any disposables in dusting. Um, there have been studies that have shown that even in dusting studies, ureteral access sheath can be used up to 37% of the time. Does the type of laser matter? Well, I think when you think about the techniques, it does, because with the fragmentation and basketing, you can use any laser, high watt, low watt, but yet when we talk about dusting, one of my uh, former co-residents, Chad Tracy, published a study looking at the 120 watt laser versus the 60 to 100 watt, and was able to show much higher stone-free rates um, if you use the higher watt laser. Well, what about cost? related to the residual fragments. This was another one of our EDGE studies where we looked at immediate reintervention for residual fragments versus observation, and we're able to show there was actually significant cost savings for observation because only 55% 55 per, 55 of the patients went on at three years to have no complications of their residual fragments. Well, perhaps that isn't all to consider. When we fragment a stone and take lots of pieces out, we send them all for analysis. So the quality of our stone analysis is much better. And I think Dr. Dodon has shown beautiful images of how complex stones can be. Um, and I think as we think about managing patients metabolically, it's important to know what the whole stone is made of. And there are very few pure stones. Um, also, I think there's many times when you just shouldn't dust. If your patient has any risk of an infection stone or recurrent UTIs, you shouldn't be dusting. You should be fragmenting and removing fragments to prevent recurrence. And that's been shown in multiple studies that you see here. 
There are specific populations where, as I mentioned before, stones just don't dust well. Um, you know, hard calcium oxalate monohydrate stones don't dust very well. Uh, cysteine stones don't dust very well. Um, and when you dust harder stones, there's really reduced laser efficiency. And sometimes it's just hard to generate dust. Um, in a randomized trial looking at 103 patients, um, the dusting was only, we were only, they were only able to achieve dust in 13% of patients. Sorry, my, there's my video. So I wanted to show you this. Uh, <clears throat> this is a stone. I don't know if it's me or the resident. I'll take responsibility. I think it was me. Um, I want to show you the ball tip fiber that we talked about. You'll see that eventually coming out here. Um, and you say to yourself, well, this looks like a stone should dust really well. Well, I'm going to, we are on dusting settings, uh, I think actually 0.2 and 50 here, and we start using it and the stone starts falling apart. Um, and that's really not what we wanted to happen here. So again, even when you think something's going to dust well, doesn't mean that it will. But what's the definition of dust? Residual fragments and dust are not the same thing. And in fact, Dr. Traxera's group even looked at scanning electron microscopy to show that the quality of the dust versus residual fragments chemically is different, which supports a photothermal effect for laser uh, treatment. And he suggested that the definition of dust should not be what we typically use, which is smaller than the, you know, the 200 laser fiber, because that's typically what we say is dust, but rather it should be able to float around in the kidney if you have the irrigation on. So it should look what, like what you see in that canister there. Well, maybe we can just basket smarter. There are, this wolf scope shows you could have two channel ability, have a basket and a laser at the same time. The Boston Scientific um, company introduced MPower, which allows you to simultaneously uh, basket uh, on your LithoView scope. And I can completely relate to this, that the frustration is related to the skill of the basketer. Um, and in this particular study, uh, the MPower improved that frustration <coughs> level. And I think, you know, one of the things Dr. Rossweiler and I have talked about a lot is maybe you can just use robotics to make everything better to overcome human limitations. So uh, in conclusion, dusting versus basketing, I mean, I think we've shown that the procedure time is less for dusting. You have decreased disposables, lower cost, comparable complications. But in the fragmentation, you have better stone composition, improved stone free rates, and I think really a clear benefit in specific populations with the ability to use almost any type of laser. So the reality is, it's never one thing or the other, right? It's always something in between. It's not like you're pure. It, the stone and the patient predict what you're going to do. Um, and I think in the end, as someone who has coached kinder, kindergarten soccer, you just have to chill because everybody is a winner. And if that doesn't work for you, music therapy will. This is Dr. Ross Weiler playing with Dr. Cavusi, the Sticks and Stones. And if you've never had a chance to listen to them, they're amazing. They play at every AUA meeting. So I thank you so much.